I've not long got back from my endocrinologist appointment. Um, I thought I'd, let's just say things didn't go well. They went as expected, but they didn't go well. Um, so I thought I'd take, um, you'll have to excuse, if you can hear any funny noises, for some reason, uh, this year since having the baby, my throat makes kind of like frog croaking noises. I'm not sure why. So, yeah, I, I'm not being disgusted or rude. It just does it all by itself. And it sounds like a frog. Uh, a frog. Um, yeah, I uh, wasn't too great on leaving the um, office of the doctors. And um, took some time when I got home to uh, compose myself before doing this video. I got all the information that I thought I would need because I, like I say, I'm not very articulate anyway um, because of uh, not feeling very well. Um, I've got a problem with authority and standing up for myself even when they're wrong. Um, so just even when I wasn't feeling, uh, even when I was feeling well, uh, it, this wouldn't have been a very good situation for me anyway. Uh, so I filled out my list of symptoms. I printed off the sheet from Thyroid UK. I think there was something like about 120. I added a couple onto the list. So I think there was about 125 symptoms on my list. And um, out of those 125, I had, I think it was about 43. Um, something like that. Or... 35 and 43 something like that I haven't got it to look at because he took that um, I also compiled a folder a lovely folder full of inf interesting information like this um, treating thyroid patients like children really interesting article about um, no uh, written by a doctor called Mal Malcolm Kendrick and um, he does a piece on it and it, it's how he, he didn't believe in NDT and then actually saw the light and now he's quite pro NDT. Um, I had my um, NICE guidelines so he would know. I have actually been looking up um, some information about like what the, the people who guide the NHS um, are telling them what to, telling them to do. I didn't seem to like that very much. Um, I've also had the um, the QOF, um, some, some, not all of them because there's loads, it's the Quality and Outcomes Framework. Uh, domains in it indicators this pages. And that, that made for interesting reading. His face was a picture when, I mean he didn't look at it and obviously he knows about it. Um, this is basically outlining um, the point system that doctors and clinics um, are on. So for um, every diagnosis and treatment of particular illnesses, they get points. You get so many points before um, the end of the financial year that makes uh, that equates to money. So, like some of the older generation might remember the game show that was on. What do points make? Prizes and in this case, points make a lot of money. Thyroid hypothyroidism um, or thyroid disease was on it in 2013. It didn't get very many points, but that it ended up, um, it got the heave ho. So in 2015, it's no longer on there. Obesity gets quite a few um, points, and um, mental health and. <coughs> um, depression funny enough which they're all so keen to label us all with not seeming to realize that it's not that we're depressed it's because we can't bear living feeling so ill but they don't get as much money for that which is funny really because you think all the things that come with hypothyroidism and the way you feel I'm sure some of the things would earn the money because there's so many little facets to it but but then i suppose if they did um, prescribe NDT and people are getting better on it, they're not going to make any money really then are they I suppose. But yeah, showed him that. Then I showed him some pictures, 
pictures of um, me um, before um, I started feeling really bad. Obviously, these were in 2014 and I was diagnosed in 2011. Um, but, you know, I was tired, had a new baby. Um, that was him there. Um, and plus, typically, my printer's not working, so about 20 minutes before the appointment, I had to run to the library and print them out. I did select colour, but it came out in black and white, but never mind, he didn't care anyway. Um, that was me, like, not long after that picture. And then this is me a year later. Well, I don't know why I'm showing you the picture, you can see me a year later. Um, and it's funny because he said, oh, I remember. He said, I remember you. He said, um, he said, oh, because I said, at one point I said to him, I don't want to feel like this anymore. I want my life back. I just want to feel better. I said, I wasn't, wasn't like this. And he went, oh, no, I know. I remember when I saw you when um, you were pregnant. How is your little boy? So he did remember William. Um, what else did I put in my folder? These were sheets from the Stop the Thyroid Madness site. And this was about uh, recommended lab work that they um, advise people to have so you can really um, start getting well, really, so you know what you're dealing with. He basically, I mean, he, he should have just laughed out loud when he saw that. Um, no, we don't test any of these. He literally, he's the endocrinologist, he's not even the GP. Um, T, um, TSH is pretty much all they'll test for. Um, he was annoyed. Not annoyed, no, no, that's an over-exaggeration. He was um, slightly irritated that my GP had even um, taken the, uh, uh, tested for ferritin. Because he was like, why did she test for ferritin? And because uh, he was going through the blood tests on the screen. And I said, well, I don't know. She just, you know, she just did them. And he said, because your haemoglobin's fine. He said, your blood count's fine. Um, you know, she said um, something about the volume. I can't remember. I have got it written down. She was slightly concerned about the volume, but not overly. He said they're completely fine. He said in that case, he said so. Um, he wouldn't have even bothered with the ferritin. And I said, yeah, but I said it shows that the ferritin is low. I said the range is something like um, 11 to 300, and I'm 10. And he just went, I mean, literally no words. He, he just shrugged him out like that. And I said, well, um, I said, well, she gave me iron tablets. And he said, what for? He said, I've just said that the blood's are fine. I said, well, I don't know. I said, I'm not a doctor. I said, um, she just prescribed me the iron tablets. I said, but then again, I said, she herself said that she didn't think they would work. I said, um, can you tell me then what I could take to raise my ferritin? And he just went, again. So no suggestions, didn't say. He said, though, uh, my vitamin D was a bit low which she said was fine, just get out in the sun for 10 minutes. Um, and he just said, well, I will I can prescribe you some vitamin D if that will make you happy. And it was like he thought the whole purpose of the, you know, going to see him was because I had the need to get a prescription. I had to ne the need to go away with something in my hand. And it wasn't, it was, the whole point of it was to go and get some better treatment for my thyroid. Anyway, what else did I have here? Um, this bit, again, from um, Stop the Thyroid Madness. The the TH, uh, TSH has failed us. It says, why it's useless. Uh, we didn't get onto that bit. He wasn't about to entertain that. Another bit on um, how to interpret your results. That was really useful for me <laughs> last night, going through my blood tests. Um, another bit from Stop the Thyroid Madness. Or oh, you can get these on um, the Facebook page I was telling you about. Um, <laughs> for thyroid patients only. And it's getting your ducks in a row. And what they mean by that is, ideally, for the NDT, if you're making the switch to work properly with that, with as, you know, minimali min minimalizing. <laughs> Um, any anything bad happening and um, you really need to get all your um, ducks in a row so like your adrenals your iron levels 
your B12, your vitamin D, um, and there's like all other things. But I'm thinking, if they won't, if they refuse to do your any more blood tests, and he refused, he said he wouldn't do it, and um, my doctor's not going to do it either. Um, how am I supposed to know if my levels have gone up from where they were before? Oh, it's just so annoying. Then I had my results. <coughs> Excuse me, still got me cold. Um, this page on why T4 medications, like synthetic medications, like levothyroxin, don't actually work. Um, this bit about desiccated thyroid and a bit about its history. And there's more more on that, the history of it, about it being around it. Since eighteen ninety one it was first started to be, it was first started um being used to treat people. And it worked. Right up until the seventies. Um, when it was more lucrative to um I think it was something to do with because the natural desiccated thyroid is natural, they couldn't tax it or something. They couldn't make money out of it anyway. Somebody much more clever clever than me and um, will be able to clear that up um, so they made a synthetic type I think um, in the 60s and then that was marketed in the 70s so that was a way to make money really um, there's a page here on options for different types of um, medication to treat your thyroid There's a whole section on the different types of NDT and, you know, how to, not how to go about choosing them, it's kind of what you want from your natural desiccated thyroid. It, it explains about what fillers are in the different ones and um, you know, just things like that and whether it's made from bovine or um, pig. Then I also took this to share with, this is what I will be buying myself. Um, so you've got thyroid, and then you've got thyroid S. Loads of people take thyroid S really successfully. I mean, gosh, I mean, you can't go on and for thyroid patients only without seeing um, one success story after the next on that. But that's got more fillers in than thyroid. But thyroid is a slightly less um, amount of desiccated thyroid per tablet. If that makes sense. God, I hate so. My head's all over the place today. Um, and the thyroid S, I think has got, um, I've heard some of the ladies say, I think it's got soya and gluten in. So if you are thinking about getting that one or any of them, please make sure you read, read up. Or if you can't read up what's in them and the ingredients, just message and ask somebody who's actually on them and they'll be able to tell you from their packaging. Uh, what else have I got? Um, there's a bit about how to go about getting the thyroid, the NDT, which came in handy when he said to me, you can't get it. And I was like, well, no, you can't. No, you can't. Well, you can. And then I turned to the page and I did say that there are different, if, different chemists in the UK who can get it in. They might not stock it all the time, but they can get it. I think they've got to have, um, um, oh gosh, I can't remember the, what it's called, but you know, um, a license, a license to import it from other countries. So your doctor would have to find or deal with a pharmacy that can do that. Well, there's a list here. Um, and th it's even on Thyroid UK as well, the list. Um about getting it on a named patient only so when you hear oh no we're not allowed to prescribe it or we can't prescribe it what they're really saying is they won't prescribe it because it's really expensive you're probably going to get um, from the doctors something called AFA or armor thyroid and uh, that's NDT just different name you know the, each name's got um, each brand I suppose has got a different name but it's all the same stuff um, so they can but it is really expensive. As it, say, for instance, like one of the ones that I want to, um, um, oh, my words, it's not booked. It's not one of the ones I want to book. It's one of the ones I want to order. 
um, I think it's like £39, I think that is with shipping. And um, that will last, it's like a thousand tablets, will, which will last apparently, if you, even if you take like three a day, like the year. Please don't do the maths on that, I'm just quoting somebody else. Um, and whereas if you've got it from the doctors, um, it's something like 40 odd or 50 odd pound um, per prescription or something. So I can kind of understand why they think it's very expensive. And that's why I absolutely don't, well, I mean, we haven't got the money, but I, I would rather have it than not have it. I could go without a few bars of chocolate um, or have it as a birthday present or Christmas present. I would rather buy it and know I had it. Because also they're sneaky. Sometimes they'll start prescribing it. You do really well on it. And then they just say, oh, it's not in the budget. We can't. Because that's happened to people as well, which I think is really sneaky and really sly. Especially when they can see the person's doing a lot better. Um, and then the other bits are about like adrenals. Um, frequently asked questions. There's quite a lot on that. Um, and that's from Stop the Thyroid Madness. Uh, wisdom in treating your adrenals. There's more information on that. Bit of information on Hashimoto's. <coughs> to be quite honest I don't even know what kinds of hypothyroid, um, thyroid disease I've got it could be Graves, it could be Hashimoto's it could be hypothyroidism which I was told originally it was I um, guess I'm not really going to find out just at the moment and I've also got a section on not that you need to say it but I don't actually know where it is uh, vitamins and minerals, so the correct vitamins and minerals that you really need to be taking um, to enhance your thyroid health. Um, do you know, I'm really proud of myself. I, I don't feel as bad as I did before. I better start crying at the end of the appointment. <laughs> um, not that he was bothered. <coughs> Um, but you know what? I think it was the whole. I hadn't slept the night before. I was really, really super nervous about how the whole thing was going to go. What will I say? What will he say? Um, so I was, a, I was a bit of a wreck going in, um, and I was sitting looking like a complete dork in the waiting room um, with my little highlighter pen, highlighting appropriate bits. So when I went in, and I was thinking, like, if he says this, I can say that. And what everybody must have thought of me. So it was packed in the hospital waiting room. And the man next to me kept taking little looks over. And I was thinking, oh God, I must look like a complete nerd. It was almost like swatting for an exam. Um, so anyway. But yeah, so I came out and I was, I was in tears. <clears throat> Cried as soon as I saw my husband when he picked me up with the baby. Not that the, you know, like I managed to kiss the baby and then get in the front seat and silently cried at the front. Um, they went shopping for a bit, had another, had a bit of a big cry there. Told my, um, the group, the thyroid patients only group, <coughs> a little bit about how it went. Oh my goodness. You see, this is the thing about being part of a group. I've always been a bit like, uh, you know, I don't know, I haven't been very pro joining groups and things like that, especially online groups, because I think sometimes I've always always felt, I'm sorry, but I have I've always felt like um, there's the danger of like mass hysteria. Um, but actually, it's not, unless I'm blind to it, it's not really been like that. And um, people really are on their own journey. And no matter which way you go, go for it, even though it's very pro NDT, um, anybody's accepted. So even if at the moment you're only taking Levo and you're quite happy to up the dose, everybody's welcome um, as long as you're nice and friendly. Um, otherwise you will be asked to leave. People have been asked to leave. Um, and you're supportive of, of other people and they are, they're fantastic. And the um, response straight away was amazing and I think that's why, uh, oh my goodness, I am actually going to start crying. Oh, thanks. The response from everybody was just so wonderful and supportive and it kind of did feel like 
I kind of did feel like family. It, it did, it just felt like, um, especially in the absence of family knowing and being able to support you, it did feel like family and everybody giving it the old there there and sending hugs and things. And do you know what? It did actually um, affect me more than I thought it would. Oh, I don't know, it's really hard to explain because they're not people I actually know, not in real life. Um, but obviously, they kind of creep into your head and into your heart a little bit and you do wonder, you know, if somebody's had a bad day or a bad experience, you do often wonder, well, I do anyway, I wonder how they're getting on now and um, when they post the next day to say they're feeling a bit better, I'm so relieved for them. So I suppose maybe some people feel like that for me as well. Um, so that helped. Thank you.